I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye some non-superwash wool with some neon fluorescent acid dyes to create a beautiful pastel uh, rainbow sherbet type colorway. The six colors we have are all Dharma acid dyes. We have fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, which is fluorescent, frozen, which is not, <laughs> and then purple pop, which also is fluorescent. Uh, this is a combination of colors I use all the time. It's one of my favorite combinations to do, and I'm excited to do this again today. The yarn we are gonna dye is 200 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's worsted weight, non-superwash, but the not super washiness of it doesn't raise huge concern flags for me. In general, these dyes, which have a lot of fluorescent pigments, do take longer, a little bit more heat, time, and acid to bind to yarn than other pigments that we use. And in general, colors strike faster to super wash yarn than non super wash yarn. So my expectation is that these colors, when we apply them to this yarn, are gonna spread out a fair amount, uh, and it's gonna take a long time for them to set on the yarn. But I have successfully dyed Wool of the Indies roving with colors in a pretty similar proportions to this, and that worked well. And so therefore, if I can dye unspun fiber with little bits of all of these fluorescent colors, then I can do about anything. There really is not a lot of dye here. It looks like there's a reasonable amount of color, but we probably have maybe one to two milliliters total of our 1% stock solution that I had. And so it's not a lot of color, but we're going to apply it to our yarn and have some fun. We are going to do one thing a little bit differently today. I am going to add a tablespoon of white vinegar to each of these dyes. And I am doing this so that way when we add it to the yarn, we have acid mixed in with the color already. So that way it can set because I don't wanna add a ton of extra volume of water to the yarn unless I need to. But let me go get the pan. This is my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. If you want to learn more about the equipment or the yarn I'm using in my videos, I do have affiliate links to everything down in the video description. So that is worth checking out. And while I have your attention, uh, please subscribe. <laughs> subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. That is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. All right, so I squeezed out a lot of our pre-soak and I'm just spreading out the yarn here in the pan. And now we're gonna start adding on colors. I'm not sure how much liquid I have here total, but I'm gonna start, and things may spread, things may even, I mean, that's not a lot of color. The yellow did not make a huge difference. Things may spread or they may not spread, and that will be Okay, I have observed recently that the radioactive color is very yellow-esque and there have been times in the past where I've been like, oh my goodness, our green has just disappeared. And really pastel, it looks very, very, uh, very, very yellow. Here is our frozen blue. I am curious, the colors are penetrating a bit through. I think we have a little bit less than maybe I thought we may have had, but the colors still may spread out a fair amount. Uh, and so sort of seeing what these colors are doing with the amount of dye I have, I'm leaving some white space in between them. Okay, and this is our purple pop, which is a very, very fun color. Yeah, and so we're very much just sort of seeing where we end up with our colors today. I will have to think about how we're gonna set this because there's definitely not enough water in here yet for me to apply 
a lot of heat. Uh, funny, because, you know, I thought that there would be, that we'd have some, like, amount of dye left, but I didn't think that we'd have enough that I could do hand-painted followed by steaming, which I suppose we could steam it, but I do sort of want to let the colors spread if they're going to spread, just because I think that that is fun. <laughs> so we will see. Okay, I've now added on all of the dye. Those cups are all empty, and I'm going to reposition things a little bit. Okay. Ooh, I mean, this looks really fun. This is what we're going to do. We're going to start applying more liquid specifically on the wider patches that we have. And these colors may spread or they may not. But now I certainly have some liquid around the edges so we can go start heating this up. This is so pretty. I really, really like these colors. We have the heat on. We are in a very low amount of water. But what I am going to do is get some foil to cover up the pan. This way we can trap any steam that's coming up and prevent losing too much water volume and therefore maybe burning anything. And I'm adding just a little bit more water. This is just some water from the pre-soak to our edges. And I'll set a timer to come back and check in after about 15 minutes. You can get covers for these pans, but I haven't done that yet. And because it's now covered, I'm also gonna reduce the heat to low, so that way, uh, again, it doesn't start bubbling or anything too fast. Hey, it's been 15 minutes, and I just reduced the heat from medium low to low low, and things are looking pretty close to how I left them, which is good. There's plenty of water around the edges, that's really, really good. So I am going to recover this and let it sit for 20 minutes because it seems like things are going pretty well. And yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Things are still looking pretty much the same, which is good. I am going to turn off the heat and leave this to cool completely. And leave it covered because having extra heat trapping that heat in there won't hurt anything and so once it cools completely in the pan then we can wash it let's wash our yarn and I'm really excited even if I was not in frame uh, we maintained some of the white and yet we still have these like neon well, they're not really neon anymore, but they're more pastel patches. Once it's dry, we'll be able to get a better sense of what the overall color coverage is. But I'm really, really happy. Uh, I think if I had them dissolved in more volume, we could have had more coverage, but I'm not minding the white. I think that that'll lead to something really, really subtle and still rainbow. I just added some clear dish soap so we can check for bleeding. And so now I'm gonna fill up the basin. All right, let's see. I'm not seeing any bleeding, which is awesome. Because since this is non-superwash yarn, we don't wanna like have to rub it and risk felting it or anything. But anyway, I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap. Um, then I'll put this through my Nina Soft spin dryer to remove a lot of the liquid. It's really great because then the yarn isn't dripping after, and then when you hang it up to dry, it dries faster. So that's why I use a spin dryer, but you definitely do not need a spin dryer. It's just if you dye large volumes of yarn, it becomes really, really, really handy. The one I use is now discontinued, so that's why I don't mention it a lot. But I use a Nina Soft spin dryer from Laundry Alternative. I do have a review on my channel, but unfortunately it's discontinued. So uh, yeah, but I think a spin dryer with decent reviews is a handy tool to have. But anyway, I'll come back once the yarn is dry. You know, I'm starting to think that I should arrange these a little bit differently when I'm making my rainbows. 
and maybe putting the purple pop next to the fluorescent fuchsia and letting the blue be at the other end. And that's because I think that, I don't know, the purple pop is so pink, especially when pastel, that you don't feel the purple as much. So maybe just like spectrum wise, it fits a little better on the other end. Nevertheless, we have a bright rainbow sherbet here. And well, let's go take a look under the black light. Let's take a look and see, ooh, what we can see. I mean, I don't really see the orange at all. Uh, Cause there's our yellow and our green. Let's see. The orange kind of has disappeared in here. Um, I'm not seeing it, but often the orange might show up with a little bit of the yellow feel, unless we're seeing that there in the yellow. Um, but I'm not feeling something that feels particularly orange, but even with the pastel colors, it still does glow under the black light. That's not to say that what you see under a black light is that big a deal. I don't know how many people still have black lights up in their home, but it's just fun. Fluorescence is fun. <laughs> and I enjoy showing it from time to time. I'm now realizing that I had a couple of videos recently, and I'm not sure when this will come out in combination with the other videos I dyed using these fluorescent colors, but there's some where I didn't use the black light, and I'm now regretting it a bit. Even though it's fun, it's not like absolutely necessary, but I just, I don't know, something about going in the closet and turning on that light is really, really fun. I suppose you can kind of do it here and then really see some of those colors pop under the black light. It's not quite the same. It's not quite the same, but certainly you can see that bit of a glow, uh, even without going in a closet. That's fun. The yellows definitely glow a lot more than the pinks and the blues don't glow at all because it's not fluorescent, but that's pretty fun. <laughs> I really like that. Can you imagine if that's how the color just looked? Whew. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's always fun to see that some colors that are notorious for striking slow and for spreading really far can strike in small areas under the right conditions. And I love how just a little bit of these neon fluorescent colors really does go a long way. I mean, granted, we have a pastel colorway and a gorgeous rainbow sherbet, fruity feeling kind of colorway, but it's a pastel nevertheless. And yeah, I, I am really happy with how it turned out. Please make sure you're subscribed to the Cabinets Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. This is not the first and absolutely not the last time I will be playing with these neon fluorescent colors at a variety of depths of shade. And you don't want to miss any of the fun. Thank you so much for watching.